Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the built-in tools that you get with JDK these days. Uh, so I will be discussing JLink and JPackage and a little bit of Docker to add. Uh, in other words, we are going to put Java on a diet. So let's get started. I'm showing you some things based on my earlier video series, Test Data Maker. Uh, this is a little, little Spring Boot application. You don't need to know much about it to get this video. But if, you, if you're curious, uh, I have like about three other videos showing some phases on how I got started with Spring Boot. But the uh, only thing I need right now is, uh, is uh, basically that I have a jar file that I can run. And second thing is that I will be including all the codes that I'm showing here in my project. And I will be putting this link in the description section. So if, if you like, you can grab it from there and study at your own time. Let's open the test data maker repository. And uh, I will show you some things. I'm running now Java 16. I think some of these tools started coming along already after Java 9 when the modules were introduced. So I don't remember clearly when they were around, but the, the, these have been around for quite some time. So Java 17, Java 18 will all include these tools. And uh, first tool I wanted to show was JLink. If I say just JLink, you can see that it's included in my path because it's part of Java 16. S same thing as Java C and Java tools, so, so similar to. You can say JLink help and you will be helped. You can see what it, it, it's able to do, but there's a lot to digest. So I, I'm just going to show you something simple. I provided some scripts, and as I said, these are included in the project, so you can clone it and uh, study it. But first thing I wanted to introduce was create minimal JRA, JRA. I have a bash script that's going to run JLink, and it's going to add modules, not all Java modules, because Java's been around since 1995, and uh, until Java 9 and module, module system, People just kept on adding more and more lib libraries, and it it get bloated more and more bloated, and we ended up having we ended up having things like MIDI instruments, one megabyte of MIDI instruments included in in JDKs, and we got a AWT and Swing and JavaFX graphical user interface libraries, which you might not need if you are only doing services, and and servers, and then we got some other libraries that. Uh, actually you might never end up using so it got more and more bloated until we got the modularity when we got the modularity features now you are able to pick up modules that you need and some things are straight being removed from the core how did i find these modules well i was running my application and i started with uh, one module java base and then i just figure out um, what kind of exceptions i'm getting compared to when I run it with all the modules. So uh, what's the first missing thing? What's the module that contains it? And then I, based on that, I just added some simple modules. And this is your typical list for any Spring Boot application. But if you do anything fancier, you might need more modules. In my case, that's the list that I need right now. And uh, at the end here, I'm just saying that please put this output in a diet JRA folder, okay? I actually have that folder. Let's remove it and run this little script. Create minimal. This is now grabbing those modules from my default JDK installation. I can also point out to other in installation, even if it's not my kind, kind of, it can be cross-platform, so I can point this to Windows libraries instead. But in this case, I was pointing to default, which is my Ubuntu Java libraries. And if I take a look in Diet JRA folder, then you can see that we get the bin folder for the binaries. We got configurations, include some legal stuff, some manuals, and most importantly, the lib folder that now contains the modules that I wish to include. This is my kind of minimal JDK, uh, just the bits that I absolutely need to run my little Spring Boot application. And I provided here two scripts, so I have a run straight. This is running my application um, directly with the kind of default Java that you have. And then I have run with Diet JRA. And this one is all only running the Diet version uh, that I just created. 
So it's a little bit uh, kind of different setup. So that's part one, uh, J-Link and what you can do with it. Is this really important? Well, I don't know, but I'm just dropping some stuff that I don't need. So it means a little bit less memory, a little bit less files to load, which might be a little bit faster, um, a lot less attack surface for the vulnerability. So all the modules that I didn't include, if there is some uh, kind of new vulnerability discovered, if they are in the areas I didn't include, I'm immune to them, unlike people using the full Java virtual machine. So to be honest, um, might not be worth the hassle always, but this is more for kind of intellectual curiosity and understanding what these tools do. Um, sometimes it's fun to kind of fine tune things like this. Sometimes it's not really necessary. You get to decide what, what do you think. By the way, I love the comments in the feedback section. So if you have an opinion whether to do this hassle or not, whether this is interesting or just kind of trivial and not important, let me know in the comment section. I would love a little bit of feedback. Also, if I make some mistakes, let me know because then I will improve as well. Okay, let's move on to the J package part. So what's the packager good for? Well, packager will allow you to grab your own application and you can grab any J array. Uh, so you can grab the default JDK, include that and your code and put them all together in an installer. or Alternatively, you can grab a custom uh, custom kind of Java that I just created. You can grab that and your code and put them together. This works whether you have a service or whether you have a kind of graphical user interface application. I'm not going to elaborate on this too much because I don't typically myself use this so much, but it's fast to show. So while we are talking about JLink, let's cover this one as well. The scripts are included in the project. Script is package. package SH will run JPackage tool similar than JLinker. Uh, I give it a name. I tell where you can you can find the jar files, input, target. Then I tell what's the main jar. So run this one. And finally, um, which uh, runtime Im image to use. If you don't say anything here, you will just get the default Java uh, that includes the package tool but I'm including my diet version of Java. So I, I run the package and what I get is platform uh, specific installer binary that includes the Java that you provided and it also includes your own code and any configuration. So it's going to crunch there for a bit. And what I end up with is test data maker one AMD 64 deb. So this is my kind of binary that I could then go on and install. I find these, uh, for my purposes, these are not necessary uh, typically because I can always very easily just run to this little bash script and just say that Java minus jar. So typically I really don't need these binaries and you have to do them separately for each platform. But if I really wanted to make very easy installation for kind of client side applications, then this would be much better than using some third party tools, probably. OK, but um, I mainly showed this because it was very fast to show. If you find some use for this, if, if you're a big fan of this, again, let me know in the comments section. Uh, as you can see, it ended up uh, getting quite fat as well. So it's not a very lightweight or thin binary because we are still including a lot of a lot of JDK with it and a lot of libraries with it. So it's quite heavy. OK, so final little trick here to show, and that has to do with Docker. So I mentioned that uh, I don't typically deal with these platform specific installers because um, you can nowadays, in mo many cases, when you are doing services, you can just put your code and Java and operating system and put them in a container and ship the whole container. That's the point of Docker. Um, we could do that easily, but the trick that I wanted to show you and the trick that's included in the project right now uh, is a two-phase Docker image. So step one, um, I'm having open JDK 17 image and running that as packager. That's my first stage. So only thing I'm doing is grabbing that open JDK JLink tool and giving it some modules to crunch and telling where to put the output. 
So this is going to do the same thing that I just showed, but within Docker. And I end up having stuff in this opt JDK 17 minimal folder. So then kicks in my second stage, which picks up some base image. I don't actually need open JDK anymore. I would just need a similar base image without any Java. But in this case, I'm being very lazy. I, I, I could actually use some more lightweight Linux versions as well. That might make sense. But as I said, being lazy here, still the principle remains the same. Whatever is your favorite Linux uh, kind of base package that you want to use or base image. But then what I'm doing here is copying from Packager that JDK 17 minimal in my new uh, image. Then I'm copying my binaries there. And uh, now having all that, then I'm setting up some environments to kind of override the default Java with the Java that I actually want to use. This is just convenience. I could obviously just use the full paths to be sure. Um, exposing port and running this. So all together, I'm also providing some scripts. So we have build Docker here. Let's do the build. I have done it earlier. So it's faster than typical. Nothing has changed. But then I have run Docker. So I can run my whole Docker container. So then I'm running the kind of uh, OpenJDK image. Um, it's now enhanced with my custom uh, virtual machine that's on a diet just a minimal needed to run Spring Boot. And then there's my a jar file that contains Spring Boot binaries. It's a fat jar all together within the container. And uh, I think that's kind of a fun way to do things. It makes things so easy that tailoring a little bit and tinkering with the virtual machines is not that difficult anymore. So I wanted to share these with you. Did you find it interesting, uh, useful, entertaining even? Click those buttons, let me know in the comments section. As for this video, I think we are done. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.